Good day traders, hope you guys are good and welcome to my learning space. In today's video, I want us to talk about liquidity. And this is part two from the video that we've spoken about last week, which is titled Market Makers. So if you still haven't watched that video, the link to it will be in the description box below. But if you're up to date, let's not waste any more time and get straight into today's video. Right, what is liquidity? Liquidity is a measure of how easily an asset can be exchanged at a stable price. In other words, how quickly one can get money out of an asset. Investments are said to be highly liquid if they can be easily converted into cash. So we have different types of asset classes, right? You have property, you have um, the stock market, you have the crypto market, and you have businesses in a form of equities, right? Now, these asset classes differ with the kind of liquidity that's found in there, right? Or with the level of liquidity. Stocks are considered to be highly liquid compared to property. Why? Because if you were to sell both of these assets at the same time, you are most likely going to get your money quickly or faster with stocks compared to with property. Usually properties take months or more depending on how the market is doing at the point in time. But with stocks, because you have market makers, they are highly liquid. If you were to sell your stock today, to today provided that the market is open, you were, you were going to be able to get rid of your assets. So in that case, that's why stocks are considered to be highly liquid in comparison to um, the property market. Now, high liquidity is associated with stable prices and low liquidity is associated with disruption in prices. Now, this is true, especially if you are a forex trader, right? All currency pairs fall in either three categories. Either one, it's a major pair, it's a minor pair, or it's an exotic pair. So major pairs are highly liquid and minor pairs are less liquid than major pairs, but more liquid than exotic pairs. And exotic pairs are the least liquid, right? Now, major pairs, because they are highly liquid, they are highly liquid because they are most frequently traded than exotic pairs. With major pairs, that's where you often have more stable prices in comparison to exotic pairs. Now, let's get to our next section. What is a liquidity pool? Liquidity pools are an intersection of market orders. These are price ranges where you find a lot of short, long positions, take profits, and price tends to oscillate a lot from these price ranges. So I've written here um, the water pool analogy because that's going to make you understand how prices move. Right. So let's assume you have a bowl, and in the bowl you have water. Right. So this is our water pool. And then you have three bowls. This is bowl number one, bowl number two, and bowl number three, right? So as you can see, they differ in sizes. So the bowls that you see here represent market orders. And then this water that's found in here represent available liquidity. And then this bowl represents a liquidity pool, right? So what causes movements in prices? A small marble in a large water pool will not have an effect on the water levels. So water levels will remain relatively where they were before this thing. As you increase the size of the balls coming into the pool, that is when you're going to see an effect. And the same thing is true for the real market, right? If you have an available uh, or if you have a, a, a liquidity pool with, say, for example, 40 million in this liquidity pool, if you were to put in 200,000, it's not going to affect the, the price levels. But if, for example, the, 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 the market orders coming into this liquidity pool 
were more than the available liquidity, that's where you're going to see a disruption in prices, right? So I hope this water analogy, just bear it in mind if you're thinking about how prices move, right? Prices move because, and also written this on my next slide, because the orders that are coming into the liquidity pool generally exceed the available liquidity. Remember from our last video, where does the liquidity come from? Market makers. Where does the market orders come from? Customers, right? So if the orders coming from customers exceed the available liquidity, which is generally the case, that's how you see prices move, right? So let's move on to our last slide. All right, so um, let's assume that this is an even liquidity and then this is even liquidity. Where does liquidity come from? Market makers, right? So with even liquidity, you have maybe 50 million. These are just example, guys. Uh, maybe 50 million on the sell side. So, um, okay, 50 million from the sell side and 50 million buy side liquidity, right? Now, if you had um, 80 million worth of orders coming from people who want to buy, right? If you had 30 million coming from people who wanted to sell, this buys, these buys, this is an obvious case, buys exceed sellers, right? They're coming into a, a, a liquidity pool that's even, right? Now, because the orders coming into the liquidity pool exceed the amount of liquidity that's available, price is gonna move the direction of this liquidity. So in this instance, price is gonna move higher. Right now, in a case where you have an even liquidity, so let's flip it. Right now, here you want to buy because there's available sell side liquidity, and then here we want to sell because there's available buy side liquidity, and you have 50 here, 50 here. Right, this order market orders from people who are buying that's worth 50 million can be easily absorbed. So in this instance, price remains where it was, right? Because orders are absorbed, but 50 here, which is the people selling, exceed the available liquidity. So as a result, price drops. Do you see why I say price is determined by the available liquidity and not necessarily Tom versus Adam, right? If the amount of orders exceed the liquidity that's available, the price is gonna move in the direction of less liquidity. In the next coming videos, we're gonna see how you can actually track where the liquidity is and where are the market orders. Right, But yeah, this is what I had for you guys today. A quick recap. Liquidity is a measure of how easily an asset can be exchanged at a stable price. A liquidity pool is an intersection of orders. This is where you find most uh, buy sell positions. This is where you find most um, um, stop losses and take profits. Fortunately enough, we already discussed how you can identify that on a live market, right? Now, we also talked about how price, for it to move, you actually have to compare the available liquidity versus the market orders that are coming into that liquidity pool. Now, if the liquidity the market orders exceed the available liquidity, price is gonna move in the direction of the least liquidity. Hope this made sense. Um, please let me know if you enjoyed this video by smashing the like button. And also 
sharing this with your um, trader buddies. For now, this is all I have for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.